In order for generators to run in parallel with each other or a grid utility supply, their respective governors and automatic voltage regulators must operate in droop mode. The only exception to this is if load lines are used to interconnect governors and AVRs. All generators consist of two main components, a prime mover driving a generator. Mounted on the same bed plate, the prime mover provides mechanical energy to turn the generator and provides active power, referred to as watts, whilst the generator provides reactive power, more commonly referred to as VARs. VARs are inductive and capacitive losses within the system due to the transfer of mechanical energy from the prime mover through the generator to the load. Most of this reactive load is absorbed by motors in the form of magnetising energy, but also can be required energising transformers and transmission lines, including subsea cables. A lamp connected across a battery consumes DC watts, which is calculated by multiplying the voltage potential across the lamp by the current flowing through it. In an AC system, this is not the case. When loads are applied to the output terminals of a generator, there is often a phase shift between line volts and line current. Here we cannot just simply multiply instantaneous line voltage and current together as they are not in phase with each other. The prime mover provides horsepower which relates to watts or active power. This energy produces the mechanical power to turn motors and provide heating and lighting. In order to calculate this we multiply root 3 by line voltage times line current by cos phi which is the cosine of the angle of displacement between line volts and line current. Likewise, VARs produced by the generator are calculated by multiplying root 3 by line voltage by line current, but in this case by the sine of the angle of displacement between line voltage and line current. Root 3, or 1.732, is a correction factor. As a generator is star connected, the measured output voltage of the machine is line to line and not a phase voltage. The current, however, is phase current, which is the same as line current on either a star or delta connected scheme. When we run generators in parallel, the voltage for each generator is controlled to a fixed datum via its AVR. Their rotors physically have to rotate in sympathy with each other due to the magnetic coupling between their rotors and stators. In this case, if the AVR on each machine were controlled to a fixed voltage datum, then, if one was set slightly higher, then there will be excessive reactive power flow from one set at the higher potential to the other machine. The same applies to the prime movers. Here, a set with a slightly higher governor datum setting will tend to increase bus bar frequency and increase the power flow from the machine. In order to prevent this happening, we introduce a droop characteristic into both the governor and the AVR on each machine. We will treat these separately. The diagram here shows engine speed against machine load in megawatts. The horizontal line at the top of the graph shows the governor selected for isochronous operation. As load is applied to the engine via the generator, the governor increases fuel flow to the engine in order to maintain the engine speed and generator output frequency. This is ideal for a single running generator operating on an islanded bus bar as the machine maintains system frequency irrespective of a system load. This diagram shows two engines running in parallel. The engine on the left has a speed demand target level of 1500 revs whilst the one on the right 1510. Assuming both sets are synchronized should the frequency of the bus bar be equivalent to an engine speed of 1505, then if both sets are selected for isochronous operation, the engine on the left will see a high speed and reduce the governor to try and achieve 1500 revs, whilst the remaining set will try and increase its speed to 1510. As the machines are physically linked through the generator rotors, this will result in the left hand set losing active power whilst the remaining set picking up all the active power. This will result in one engine tripping on either overcurrent or reverse power. If the governors and the prime movers are selected to run in droop mode, then as the engines pick up active power, the governor speed demand level decreases and vice versa. 
This allows stable power sharing between engines, the only problem being that the bus bar frequency will change as load is applied or removed. Looking at the generator now, we see a graph showing line volts against load, which in this case is reactive power, or VARs. The greater the reactive load on the generator, the lower the AVR target voltage. This allows the generators to share reactive power with the disadvantage of varying bus bar voltage. If we now start a set, after a period of time the machine will attain nominal synchronous speed and line voltage. By dead bar closing the machine onto an eyelided bus bar, the machine's governor now maintains the speed of the machine and consequently bus bar frequency. Adjustment of the AVR datum will change the bus bar voltage. Both the governor and AVR allows approximately plus or minus 10% adjustment of nominal levels. Raising the governor datum manually with the control panel push buttons will increase the bus bar frequency and vice versa. Likewise, increasing the AVR datum will increase the bus bar voltage as will the lowering of the bus bar voltage when the AVR datum is reduced. With our bus bar at a nominal 11 kV 50 Hz, we are going to apply a purely inductive load onto the system, similar to that of a direct online motor start. When we apply an AC voltage across a pure inductor, we expect the current flowing through it to lag the voltage by 90 degrees. From our formulas for VARs and watts, we can see that the cosine of 90 degrees is 0, whilst the sine of 90 degrees is 1, so all our load will be present on the generator rather than the prime mover. As the entire load is reactive, the generator is going to supply this load. The AVR will increase excitation current to maintain generator output voltage, but instead of controlling this at 11 kV, the voltage will be controlled to a slightly lower level due to the AVR's droop characteristic. Looking at the bus bar instrumentation, the voltage has dropped slightly whilst the frequency has remained at 50 Hz. This is because there is no load on the prime mover. Looking at the generator operating chart, we can see that the machine is operating at zero power factor in the lagging quadrant. The entire load is reactive, so the prime mover is not producing energy into the system. The generator instrumentation also displays reduced terminal volts, while the frequency remains at 50 Hz. The power factor meter displays zero lagging, and, as reactive power has been produced but no megawatts, we have to manually increase the AVR datum to bring back the bus bar voltage to 11 kV, and decrease this once the inductive load is removed. With our bus bar back at a nominal 11 kV 50 Hz, we are now going to apply a purely resistive load onto the system. When we apply an AC voltage across a pure resistor, we expect the current flowing through it to be in phase with the voltage across it. From our formulas for VARs and watts, we can see the cosine of 0 degrees is 1 and the sine of 90 degrees is 0, so all our load will be present on the prime mover rather than the generator. As the entire load is resistive, the prime mover is going to supply all this load. The AVR will need to increase excitation current to maintain the generator voltage. Looking at the bus bar instrumentation, the frequency has dropped while the voltage initially dropped and recovered to the nominal 11 kV setting. The generator instrumentation shows the volts remained unchanged, although the frequency has fallen. There are megawatts but no megavars on the system and the power factor is displayed at unity or 1. During application and removal of the resistive load, we have to manually adjust the governor datum to maintain a bus bar frequency of 50 Hz. Whilst these loads are brought onto the machine individually for our demonstration, in a typical installation, the loads imposed on a power generation system will be made up of a combination of both resistive, inductive and capacitive elements. We now see our generator with a combination of both inductive and resistive loads. Looking at the generator vector meter, we can see the machine operating at an approximately 0.8 power factor with a load on both generator and prime mover, power factor being the ratio of VARs to watts. The generator instrumentation shows the volts at 11 kV, 
frequency at 50 Hz, power factor at 0.8 and both megawatts and megavars present on the machine. The angle of displacement between volts and current is now somewhere between 0 and 90 degrees. Here we can see the power triangle shown graphically. The vertical element, watts, is the load imposed on the prime mover, whilst the horizontal element is the reactive load imposed on the generator. Whilst most industrial generation schemes operate in the lagging sector, i.e. inductive, long transmission cables and arc furnaces can impose capacitive loading on the generators. If we consider this as a right angled triangle, then the third side of the triangle is VA, or apparent power, the current being a combination of both resistive and reactive elements. The lower the power factor, the greater the VA, and hence more current flowing in the system, leading to warmer generator and transformer windings and cables. It is therefore advantageous to reduce reactive power on a generator and transformers to a minimum, to allow greater active power flow through them. With one set on the bus bars at 11 kV 50 Hz, we will start another and synchronise onto the same bus bar. The moment the second generator breaker closes, there will be no power generated from this machine. This is because the governor and the AVR datums match the bus bar frequency and voltage. Both prime movers governors now have control over bus bar frequency and active power sharing between sets. Likewise, both generators AVRs now have control over bus bar voltage and reactive power sharing between sets. If we now increase the governor on the set we have brought online, the megawatts on that set will now increase, which will reduce the power on the other set. As we are now increasing the power on the second set, and we are not connected to a grid utility, the bus bar load is fixed, so the bus bar frequency will tend to rise slightly. The correct way to match active power between sets whilst maintaining bus bar frequency is to raise the incoming set's governor whilst reducing the governor on the loaded set. Once equal, both governors can now be increased or decreased simultaneously to trim up the bus bar frequency. We can compare this to two men on a tandem. The road speed is common to both riders although the more effort supplied by one rider will reduce the energy required by the other to maintain the same speed. Should both riders increase their effort, then the speed of the bike will increase, which we can equate to system frequency. With more resistive load placed on the bus bar, both sets will pick up equal amounts of the increased load, assuming the droop on both sets are set the same. This will lead to a reduction in system frequency which can be corrected by applying simultaneous raised governor signals to both sets. Likewise, if load is removed, the bus bar frequency will rise and can be corrected by lowering both governors simultaneously. Should the bus bar frequency rise due to load fluctuations when a generator is initially closed onto the bus bar, power on all sets will reduce, forcing that set into reverse power. This may cause the reverse power protection relay to trip the breaker. It is therefore important to increase the governor immediately the set comes onto the bars. To prevent this we normally synchronise super synchronously in order for the machine to pick up power naturally when the breaker closes, as well as raising the governor immediately. Taking a look now at the generators, the AVR now maintain bus bar voltage and reactive power sharing between interconnected sets. Any inductive load placed on the bus bars will cause the voltage to reduce whilst the reactive load is shared between sets. The principle of voltage control and reactive power sharing is similar to that of frequency control and power sharing on the prime movers. The only difference is that the generators can absorb reactive power and fall into the capacitive quadrant of the generator vector meter. However, importing too many vars into the generator can cause field weakening on the rotor excitation current which can cause pole slipping where the turbine loses synchronism with the bus bar. We now turn our attention to the grid utility supply. If we look at the vector meter for the grid to our bus bar, it is divided into four quadrants. The grid can be thought of as a bi-directional generator. We can import or export both active and reactive power. 
With no generators on the system, we liven up our bus bar from the grid supply. Placing an inductive load on the bus bars, we can see from the chart we are importing VARs from the grid with a power factor of zero. Removing this load, we now apply a resistive load. We are now importing active power at unit of power factor from the grid. With the load removed, we now synchronize the generator to the bus bars. The grid supply now holds the bus bar frequency and voltage constant, so the generator's governor and AVR have no effect on these. This is due to the size of the generator with respect to the grid network. Instead, if we raise the set's governor, all that will happen will be the megawatt on the set will increase and we will export all the energy into the grid supply. It is often in this situation we base load the set, where we control the governor to regulate the output active power from the prime mover to an optimum level. Should we now place a resistive load on the bus bar, the amount of power being exported into the grid will fall, and if this is greater than the power being produced by the prime mover, then the power will be imported from the utility supply. Increasing the governor on the machine will reduce the amount of power being imported. Tripping the grid supply whilst exporting megawatts will cause the bus bar frequency to rise, and whilst importing power will cause the bus bar frequency to drop. With the grid breaker closed, and an unloaded generator on the bus bar. If we place an inductive load on the bus bar, initially the grid will supply all of the reactive power. But if we then increase the set's AVR datum, this will be reduced as the generator picks up the reactive power. If the generator produces more VARs than the bus bar load, then reactive power will be exported into the grid. Most industrial consumers are metered in MVA so it is advantageous to use generators to offset the reactive power being taken from the grid in order to keep this to a minimum. Overcompensating by generating too many VARs from the generator is equally as bad as the MVA will increase once the power factor has passed through unity. Tripping the grid supply whilst exporting megabars will cause the bus bar volts to rise and whilst importing reactive power will cause the bus bar voltage to drop. With multiple generators connected to a grid system, there is no interaction linking watts and VARs between sets as the grid maintains bus bar voltage and frequency. However, where there are long cables or transformers between the grid feeder and the generators, there may be voltage variations on the system due to transformer regulation and volts drop along transmission cables.